Hello. Bill Witt, the math twit, back here. Today we're going to cover factoring. Now, factoring by itself, you're going to think, is useless. Okay? But when combined with basically the next four chapters of what we're going to cover in algebra, it's going to become very useful. Okay? So pay attention. You're going to need to know everything we cover today. Now, I'm going to talk a mile a minute, as usual. So if you need to replay in slow motion what I had to say, don't forget that you can always go to www.montgomerycollege.edu upslash algebra. Okay? Let's dig in and look at factoring. Now, factoring is basically, I don't want to say the opposite of multiplication, because you're going to say division is. But factoring smells a lot like division. Okay? Factoring is the backwards of multiplication. So it's going to behoove us to review multiplication and the implications thereof. Let's do just that. Let's see. The basic idea of exponents, which are multiplication, for instance, 3 to the 2th times 3 to the 4th, remember what that meant? That meant how many 3's we're multiplying, or how many of the base we're multiplying, times 3 to the 4th. Look, I have 4 of the red 3's. Okay? And an interesting thing happened here when I'd multiply 3 to the 2th times 3 to the 4th. Remember that we'd get 3 to the 6th, because you can count them. There's 6 of them. So that led to, you may remember from last time, the first rule, looking at the 2 and the 4, the first rule of exponents. And that is, any base, x to the a, times the same base, x to the b, you add the exponents, meaning it's x to the a plus b. So we could have just, without writing out all those 3's, gone 3 to the 2 times 3 to the 4th, added the 2 and the 4, and gotten 3 to the 6th. You sure wouldn't want to write out all these x's. We can just use this rule, remember, by adding exponents and get x to the 17th. Okay? Now we had another rule to save us uh, writing out things. It was the second rule, and it would behoove us to review that. Okay? The second rule had something to do with parentheses. Okay? When we want to write out a whole parentheses, b number of times. Well, the x to the a to the b. That's when we multiply the exponents, when we have the parentheses. So in this case, x to the 2, we could have written it out four times and then added exponents. But in this case, we're going to use our rule and get x to the 8. You wouldn't want to write this out 10 times. So we'll just use our rule and quickly get x to the 50th. You knew that. Okay? What about a teeny bit was going to be involved today as well? is combining like terms, okay? Terms that have basically the same number for their exponent. Let's look at an example. Let's see, who's alike here? Well, the x to the tooths are alike, and I have five of them, and I have minus three of them, so I would combine them to make, now this is combining additively to two of them. Now, you're not going to get an x to the fourth in this situation, okay? So I have five minus three of them. 8x and the 2x together make 10 of those x's. A lot of people think multiplication, you could use the word of, and that's true. 10x, this is we're adding like terms here. And then we have two constants here, 2 and minus 5, and they add up to negative 3. Okay, we remember, you remember that. That's ancient history, or at least a week's history. Okay? One last thing for review we're going to need today, and that's the distributive property. When we want to distribute this term, 3x squared, y to the third, to everything inside parentheses. Now, in this case, there's only two terms inside parentheses. I would give, distribute him to the 5xy squared. Well, let's see. I've got to multiply it. And x to the ninth, well, it's x to the oneth. When there is no uh, exponent, we, we're remembering that it's a 1. Okay? Adding exponents, let's see. 3 times 5. Now, those aren't exponents, so you're not going to add them. You're going to get 15 x to the 2 times x to the 1th is x adding exponents x to the 3rd. y to the 3rd times x to the 2th, y to the 5th. Now, I still have to distribute your buddy to the second term. Okay. Now, what am I going to multiply this 3 by? I don't even see a number. When you don't see a number, put your buddy 1 in. Remember what you can throw him around like 
cheap meat. Okay, three times one is three. And then we'll add our exponents, x to the tooth and x to the tooth, get x to the fourth. And once again, add your exponents, y to the third, and there is no exponent on that other y. That means it's y to the one-th. So three plus one, that's where your four came from. Okay? Okay, that's the old stuff. Now, you know what time it is. It's time for the new stuff. What is the new stuff? Factoring. Hmm, it's the opposite of multiplication. Well, not the opposite, but the backwards of multiplication. Hmm, I've heard that word factoring. For instance, greatest common factor. We did something on that a while ago. Let's think. Factors. We'll take the number 30. What is a factor of 30? 3 is a factor of 30 because it goes into 30 evenly. Multiplicatively. 5 is a factor of 30 because it goes into 30 evenly. 2 is a factor because it goes in evenly. In fact, you could say a set of factors for 30 is 3 times 5 times 2. Those are factors. As opposed to, here's what everybody mixes it up with, multiples. 30 times 2, 30 being a factor of 60. 30 times 3, 30 being a factor of 90. What's 30 times 4? 30 times anything. 30 will be a factor of that. What are those red numbers then? They're not factors. 30 is a factor of them. They're multiples. So let's not mix up these numbers. Let's do a couple more. Got to know your words. 3 is a factor of 45. 5 is a factor of 45 because it goes in evenly. In fact, 3 times 5 times 3 is a factorization of 45, you could say, because it multiplies to 45. But collectively, they're all factors. Multiples of 45 would be eh, 45 times 1, 45 times 2, 45 times anything is going to be a multiple of 45. Okay? Let's look at individual ones. They don't have to come in sets. Factors of 12, 2 goes into 12 evenly. He's a factor. 3 goes into 12 evenly. He's a factor. 4 goes into 12 evenly. He's a factor. Now, they don't have to all multiply to 12. They just have to go in evenly. That makes them factors. Note that 2 times 3 times 4 is not 12, but 2, 3, and 4 are factors. 12 times 2, 24. 12 times 3, 36. 12 times anything is going to collect multiples of 12. Remember these fancy schmancy words. One more until you're sick of it. A, a factor of 50. Oh, I almost screwed it up. Another factor of 50 because it goes in evenly. Another factor of 50 is 10 because it goes in evenly. Can I talk any faster? No. Let's see. Are there any multiples of 50 that we could, well, 50 times 1, of course, 50 times 2, et cetera. You get the idea between factors and multiples. Okay, now why, why are we covering that? Because we're, we're talking about factors, okay? And in this case, we want to find the greatest common factor of more than one thing. Common factor of more than one thing, maybe of 30, and 18. What is the largest factor that is a factor of both of them? Now, maybe you can do it in your head, but I can't. So I want to give you a method that works all the time. We'll do a couple of them. You're going to need to know how to do this uh, to find that number. We're going to, it's going to be useful later on in the show. Okay, the greatest common. Let's break up 30 into factors. Let's see. 30 is 6 times 5. Now, I just happen to choose 6 times 5. I can, and I'm going to keep breaking it up until I can break it up no more. 6 can break up into 2 and 3. 5 cannot break up any further. We don't count 1. Okay? So you could say that 2 times 3 times 5 is the, we say, since it can go no further, prime factorization of 30. 18, let's see, I know 2 goes into 18. 2 times 9, right? Now, 2 can't be broken up any further, but 9 can break up into 3 times 3. And I think I'm, once again, at some dead ends. So the prime factorization of 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. Now, what I'm looking for in these green sets, basically, is what's the same, okay? In other words, the intersection. What's in both? Well, let's see. I see a 2 in both, and I see a 3 in both, and 2 times 3 
is the greatest common factor. Six, that's the largest thing, if you think about it, that goes into 30 and 18. Now you're saying, I could have done that in my head, Fred. Well, Now, I don't want you to think that I just got lucky that time, uh, picking the 6 and the 5, for instance, at the beginning. You know, what if I took these same two numbers, just for method-wise, and broke them up in a different way? What I want to show you is it doesn't matter. 30 and 18. This time, instead of 6 and 5, let's go uh, 10 and 3. Okay? Now, 3 is at a dead end, but 10 can be broken into 5 and 2. Okay? Once again, we still end up with a 5, a 2, and a 3. Now, it really doesn't matter what order, but the prime factorization of 30 will still give me a 2, a 3, and a 5, or a 5, a 2, and a 3, no matter how you look at it. Same thing with 18. Let's pick a different way to break it up. We're still going to end up with the same answer. Feeling lucky today? Let's see. 3 and 6. Okay, 3's at a dead end. Let's break 6 up as far as he'll go. And once again, we still have two 3's and a 2. See? And once again, what's common to both sets is going to be, let's see, there's a 3 in both, and there's a 2 in both. So we're still going to get the same answer no matter how we break them up. That's good. Okay? I don't want to have to get lucky here. Okay? Let's do a little bit more difficult problem, though, so you get the idea. Ooh, I'm dying! It's not that hard. Let's see. The greatest common factor of 60 and 140. I'm guessing that you couldn't do this in your head. Well, let's break 60 up. Okay, that's a viable breakup, 10 times 6. 10 can be broken up into what? 2 times 5, and 6 can be broken up into 2 times 3. And I think everything's at a dead end there. Okay, the 140, simple as just divide by 10, 10 times 14. I'll break 10 up into 2 times 5, and 14, isn't that? 2 times 7, okay, and everybody's at an end point. Now let's see who's common to both sets. We want the greatest now, the most we can get. I see a two twos and a five in both sets, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept the two twos, okay? Two twos and a five, what does that multiply to? 20. Son of a gun, the greatest common factor of 60, and the greatest thing that goes into both 60 and 140 is 20. And that same method thank you, works all the time. Hmm. Uh-oh, let's do it with letters. Okay, break them up so they can be broken up no more. X to the second, that, of course that means X times X. Y to the fourth, that's four Y. Same thing, it's just easier, I guess. X to the third, three X's. And Y to the tooth, two Y's. Okay, let's take a look at these two sets and say what's in both. What's the most that's in both? Well, I'm looking at two x's and two y's there, and two x's and two y's there. That's the most that's in both. Now, there is, for instance, in the first one, four y's, but there isn't four y's in the second one. So that's not making it. I'm looking at what's the greatest thing in both. So there's your greatest common factor in this case, is two x's and two y's, written downtown as x squared, y squared. Thank you very much. Hmm. You're going to have to get good at this. So let's do the, a really bad boy here. Okay, let's see. Let's break these like they've never been broken up before. 45, 5, and 9. I'm going to break up 9 to the n. Okay, that's it. What about the a's? Okay, the, the, the exponents aren't hard, are they? Just write that many of them. Okay, that's quite a set there. Okay, let's see. 18 a, b to the third. I'm going to break 18 into, I choose 2 and 9. 9 can be broken up further. Okay, now let's take care of the letters. A is just A, just one of them. B to the third. Okay, let's take a look at the end points only. I'm only looking at the end points, or the end numbers, if you would. Okay, now what's in both? Well, let's see. It's got to be common to both. I'm seeing two threes, so I'll put them. I'm seeing an A in both. And two Bs in both. Now, it has to be in both or get out of town. Okay, that's all I see in both, so I guess the greatest common factor of these two terms is the multiplication of that, 9ab squared. Hasta la vista, baby. You thought that was so hard, didn't you? Not. Okay, well, why do we care about the greatest common factor? Well, that's going to be our first step to factoring. 
to kind of like our first punch at our opponent. First thing I can break off, and that's gonna, I'm going to look and see what is something I can take out. I'm going to look at all three of these. Assuming you could find the greatest common factor of these, in this case, I'm going to assume you, you use that method and find 3xy. What I would do is divide out or factor out 3xy, which is basically, it does smell like division, doesn't it? Dividing each one of these schmickies, the first one, 21x squared y by 3xy, getting 7x. Dividing the second one by 3xy, of course it has to be with everybody, that's why it's common, and getting minus 2y, and dividing 3xy by 3xy. What's 3xy divided by 3xy? Don't say 0. What's anything divided by itself? What's oogie divided by oogie? 1. You have to write 1, okay? That way this will, if you would, check. I've broken this into a multiplication problem, which is what factoring is. And the great thing about <laughs> factoring is you'll be able to check it. If I multiply it out, son of a gun, I get 21x squared y. You see where we use distributive property. If I multiply the second terms, son of a gun, I get minus 6xy to the second. And you can see where you needed that 1. If that 1 wasn't there, you wouldn't have got your old buddy 3xy. So it's nice to be able to check because you know that you're right in a factoring problem. Everybody gets 100 on this test because you can always check it. Sissy on you if you don't. Okay? Let's try another one. Hmm. What is the greatest common factor of this bad boy? Well, could be 2x squared. Okay? I'm looking, I see a 2 goes into all of them, and an x squared is the largest thing that goes into all of them. But you know what? I've got to get you used to this. When the largest term is a negative, instead of using 2x squared, use the negative. Because we want to take out all the, the whole idea of the greatest common factor is to take out what's difficult. And I hate negatives. So let's take it out. We don't have to worry about it. Okay? So instead of factoring out 2x squared, I'll factor out negative 2x squared. Okay, it's going to make life easier, I promise you. Well, if I factor that, divide, same thing, divide it. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. Okay, got to do it to everybody, though. Divide uh, 16x to the third by our greatest common factor, and I get a positive 16 divided by negative 2. Positive divided by a negative. Don't forget, negative answer there. Okay, and here again, a positive divided by a negative. Okay, now the x to the seconds are going to drop out there. They're going to, you know, x to the second divided by x is 1, but the 22 divided by negative 2 is negative 11. Okay, so this is your answer. And you love it. You can check it. Okay, just multiply it back out. Before you turn that test in or before you turn that homework in, multiply that, distribute. That's why we reviewed it. Hi, Mom. And you, you can walk up. Throw that paper on the, and you know you're right. Okay? Now that's uh, factoring what we would call monomials. Let's, let's break things up even more. Before we want to factor polynomials, let's review what would be the backwards of that, multiplying them. Because basically, factoring is the backwards, as I said, of multiplication. Remember if we multiply polynomials like this one? It's like take me down to distribution town. Okay, we take him and multiply him times both, 2x times 6x, and 2x times 5, right? Now that's only the 2x. What about the 1? 1 times 6x, I'm, I'm lining them up to be like terms, aren't I? And 1 times the 5. Remember when we did that? Of course, now it's time, if we have some, and we do, to add like terms. The only two that are alike are the 10x and the 6x. And that gives me an answer, okay? So note where these answers came from. The 12x to the second came from multiplying these two, or what we would call the first two terms, the first of the first set of parentheses and the first of the second set of parentheses. So that first one, 12x squared, always comes from those two, okay? The last guy, doesn't he always come from the last two in the parentheses? Okay, and that's easy. Here's where you've got to get prepared. Where does this guy come from? That's a little bit tough, and this is going to be key to factoring. He comes from a combination of two things. 
that I call the rainbow. See where there, I wanted to have something visual, okay? So I'm going to be using this idea of the rainbow. The rainbow is the outsides and the insides. The outsides and the, see the rainbow? Actually, two rainbows, okay? We're going to sum those up. Let's see if we multiply this. That the first, give me 3x squared. x times minus 7. Okay, we're going to, we've taken care of x. Now let's multiply the 1. Okay, and him times the minus 7. And once again, we're going to add like terms and get an answer. Now let's work backwards and see where that answer came from. Once again, the 3x squared came from the first two, just like the previous question. And the last troublemaker, minus 7, came from the last two in the sets. But your buddy in the middle, minus 4x, comes from the rainbow. Okay, now we're going to be talking about the rainbow. Remember what I said, the rainbow is the outsides and the insides. It even looks like a rainbow. Okay, so if we wanted to work backwards, actually, and factor, what factoring is, the backwards of multiplication, we're going to consider this thing, the rainbow. Okay? Suppose I asked you to factor this. Well, we know it looks something like that, but I don't know what numbers to put. Okay? Well, let's make an educated guess. What's going to go here? Well, I don't know, but I know they multiply to 12x squared. So an educated guess wouldn't be 5 and 7, because it doesn't multiply to 12. How about, that's, a, that's an, it's not an idiot guess, 6x and 2, it's a reasonable guess, okay? And these two numbers always give me that 5. Well, I know, that's either 1 and 5 or 5 and 1. Multiply now, okay? So this is a reasonable guess. How do I know whether it's right or not? Well, simple, multiply it out. We know the, the, the first and the last are right. All I have to do is check for the rainbow. That's where he comes from. Let's check my guesses rainbow. The outside 6 and 5 would be 30, and 1 and 2 would be 2. 30 and 2 no! is not 16x. Well, so what do you do now? Well, that's okay. Try again. Let's make another educated guess. Well, I like to keep written down what I've tried before. I had tried 6 and 2. Let's try 3 and 4, okay? And we're pretty much locked into 1 and 5 or 5 and 1. Let's try that, okay? Well, it seems like a very reasonable guess. What do we have to check? Check for 16. I've got to get a 16 for my, if you would, rainbow. 3 and 5 is 15. 1 and 4 is 4. 15 and 4 Sometimes you have to do it a bunch of times until you get it right. Okay, let's try yet another. What haven't we tried? Maybe flipping the order. Okay, don't give up. Let's see, reasonable guesses. Well, we had three and four. Oh, what, instead of six and two, let's try two and six. Okay, sometimes changing the order. And once again, one and five. Let's check it. Check for the rainbow. Two and five, oh, I smell. And one and six. Hi, Mom! And guess what? You have multiplied it out, so you know you're right. Every question on this test, you either don't finish the test, or if you finish it, you know you're right. Excellent. That's the idea. You have to check. People say, well, isn't there an easier way? No, there isn't. Check all algebra books. You make educated guesses, and you try, and you check. Okay, let's do a couple more. Hmm. Educated guess for these two. Well, you, you love five because there's only two of them. Five X and one X. Okay, what about six? Eh, there's a couple. Let's, what could multiply to six? Well, two and three, three and two, one and six. Let's just make a guess. Okay, now we need a negative six. So we need a, you have to know your negative multiplication. To get a negative six, we either need a negative and a plus or a plus and a minus. So just keep trying, okay? We needed one of each to get that negative six. Let's check our rainbow to get 13. Please, please. 
That's going to give me a positive 5 times a positive. That's going to give me a 30. Uh, it's not looking good. And this is going to give me a minus 1. Not good. No! So what do we do? As usual, try again. Sometimes you get lucky. You have to know your negatives. Once again, 5x times 1x. What would be another guess for negative 6? I need a plus and a minus. How about a plus 2 and a minus 3? That multiplies to negative 6. Let's check our rainbow. 5 times that's negative 15 and positive 2. Ooh. You're despicable. Ooh, but it's close, isn't it? Okay, but I don't want a negative 13. I want a plus 13. So I smell that I'm very close. I think I'm just going to switch the signs. Okay? Let's try once again 5 and 1 and use the same numbers this time, but I switch the sign, a minus two and a plus three. Am I gonna get my buddy 13? Let's see, five times C, positive 15, and negative two, I have more positive than I have negative. There's your buddy, and you know you're right. You know you're right. You can walk up to the desk, spit in my face, because you know you got 100 on that test, because you checked it. Okay, let's see. Hmm. What two numbers? Well, you love this. What multiplies to that? X and X. That's the only ones. What multiplies to 12? This is going to work for any of them. Well, you get good at this after a while. I smell the right numbers, but let's just try other ones just in case. Let's see. Check my rainbow. Uh, let's see. 4X and 3X. Not making it. What a maroon. <laughs> what an ignorant. That was a ridiculous <laughs> guess, actually, because uh, now well, I know I needed for the positive 12, I needed either a plus and a plus or a minus and a minus. But you knew, you should have known, you get good at this, that it, well, it should have been a, at least a minus and a minus, because otherwise, how's that minus going to get there? Okay? So not the best. It was, I can't say it's a ridiculous guess, but it wasn't the best guess. Okay, let's try again. You get to start smelling the right things here. Now, to get that, I know I need x and x. For this 12, let's make some reasonables. And I still don't think plus and a plus is not reasonable. While the 6 and the 2 are going to give me the 8, no! I want a negative 8. So I probably shouldn't have made that guess. I probably should have guessed negative and negative from the first place. But that's all right. I'm not lucky today. X and X, and in this case, I bet you know what I'm going to use this time. I'm going to use my minus 6 and my minus 2, which both multiply a negative times a negative to the plus 12. And what my rainbow is going to add up to here, minus 2X and minus 6X, there's your buddy. Let's eat dessert. Uh-oh, this looks a little bit different. I want to give you a bunch, bunch of examples, and I think you're going to find that they all follow right in line with the same idea. Make educated guesses, check them. As long as you check, you can make ridiculous guesses even. Let's take a look at this one. What's going to multiply to that? Well, x, y, and x, y, two x's and two y's. That's going to work, okay? And what's going to multiply to the 8? Hmm. Let's try 1 and 8, pretending that we're smart. Check your rainbow. Works. That's 1. When you multiply that, what do you get? 1xy and 8xy. 1xy and 8xy. 9xy. You're despicable. What was I thinking? I'm not very lucky today. I'm not very smart today. Let's try another pair. I think the first pair is, is set in stone. Let's see, we tried 1 and 8. How about 2 and 4? Oh, I smell 6, don't I? 4xy and 2xy. There's your buddy. And multiplying it out, you'll know that you're right. I'm going to do a whole bunch. Oh, oh. This one looks very different. There's only two terms in this one. Hmm. Only two terms. And what's missing is that middle term. This form of things is sometimes called the difference of two squares. 
because it's something squared, difference in first subtraction, minus something else squared. This is x squared minus 4 squared. And this is going to still fall in line with our regular path, if you consider it, with our regular pattern. Okay, let's take a look. Couldn't this be written x squared plus none x minus 16? Now you're used to it, okay? Kind of. x squared plus none x minus 16, where we're looking for two that give me the first term, and I'm looking for two that give me negative 16. Well, minus 8 and plus 2 do multiply to negative 16, but the rainbow in this case is going to give me what? Minus 8x and plus 2x give me minus 6x. Go! That's not making it. We need, if you think about it, we need a pair that adds up to the none, that adds up to 0. One way to add up to 0 is to have plus of something and minus of the same thing. Plus oogie joo minus oogie doo is going to be 0. Plus 7 minus 7, whatever, OK? I think you'll notice a pattern here. How about notice that the square, the 16, that's why we need it. What if I do a plus 4 and a minus 4? Now let's check our rainbow. Hi, Mom. There's your buddy. So you're going to get a shortcut, I bet you, when you see the difference of two squares that you're going to want plus something and minus of the same thing. How about this one? I hope you can see that this is another difference minus of two squares. y squared minus 5 squared. You smell squares like 25, 49, 36, those kind of numbers, OK? Well, we'd use the same trick. That middle term is missing, so you could say that it's y squared plus none x minus 25. Now, you don't have to write that. I think you're going to notice a pattern as we go on here, OK? We're looking for numbers when we have the difference of two squares that add up to 0. So we've got y and y to get our y squared, and plus 5 and minus 5. And that'll give you the correct rainbow, minus 5y and plus 5y, to get your buddy 0. Consequently, we'll get, you know, that'll wipe out, and you'll get y squared minus 25. Bam! <laughs> you know you got it. OK? Now, let's look at this one. This, you, you might start off going, Ew! because look at the possibilities for 70. And I mean, you could be 7 and 10, 35 and 2. 5 and 14, there's too many possibilities you say, I don't want to spend, well, one of the things, this is why we went over greatest common factor. What if we take out the greatest common factor first, thereby making these numbers much smaller and less possibilities for us to check? Okay, we can do that fact, breaking it up. Let's see, now I have to know that, there, you know, there is a greatest common, there might, might not be one, but let's check it. If I take out a 5, Take the 5 out of the first term, I get x squared. Oh, that's much easier. Take a 5 out of that, 25 divided by 5, that's a minus. Okay? And 70, let's make him smaller by a factor of 5. Oh, it's going to be much easier. Okay? Now, the 5's still there, but all I have to do is break up the blue part, if you would. Okay? Let me check, make sure that this multiply. Yes, it does. That times that, minus 25. And 5 times minus 14, ramma jamma. Okay, we're looking good. Now, I'm not done yet because I haven't factored as far as it will go, you see. Okay? Now, break up the blue part. Five's done. Okay? And let's see. X and X, just like I did before, I'm going to use my rainbow trick now. I'm looking for numbers that multiply to negative 14. Hmm. Let's check the rainbow. What does that give me? Plus 7 and minus 2 give me a plus 5. Go! Oh, gosh, I'm having a tough day. Well, that's OK. Let me try again. Let's see. Break it up. I know I need x and x. I'm looking for numbers that well, you're starting to get good at this, aren't you? A minus 7 and a plus 2. You smell that you need more minus than plus here because you, you need that minus 5. So let's see. It's going to give me a plus 2x and a minus 7x. Hi, Mom. There's your buddy. And we're looking good. OK, let's see. Let's try a couple more. Oh, oh my gosh. We want to take out the 
greatest common factor. In this case, you say 2x squared. Oh, I showed you something, though. We, don't you hate negatives? Instead of taking 2x squared out this time, which you could do, but you'd be left with a negative. And that, see that minus 6x to the fourth? Let's Wait take a out, minute. Let's take out a negative 2x squared, okay, to get it out of here. I hate negatives, okay? If I take that out, he's gone. I'm done with him. I'm done with the red stuff. Let's see. Negative divided by negative. Bam, that's a positive. Take a negative out there. I can deal with that middle term, though, and take the negative 2x squared out there. Okay, now I'm going to break up the blue part. Well, I'll check it first. Minus times plus. Yeah, that works. Yeah, that works. I strongly recommend you check here, okay? Now we'll break up the blue part. Eh, this is a tough problem. I'm done with the red part. Okay, what do I need for the 3x squared? Well, certainly a 3x and an x. And for the 11, well, good old 11. There's only two numbers that multiply to 11. And I know it's either a plus and a minus or a minus and a plus. Let's try, let's just make a guess. Check your rainbow. Gives me a minus 3x and a plus 11x. What we've got here is failure to communicate. I cannot seem to get it today, but I will. Let's see. Try one more time. 3x and x. Ah, I'm betting that I need more negative than positive. Positive 3x minus 11x. There she blows. I believe we've got it. And you know you're right. Couldn't you just kiss yourself? OK, let's just do one more. Ooh, this one, that looks very different. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take out that greatest common factor. What's the greatest common factor of these two terms? Well, if you know how to find greatest common factor, uh, it's 10x to the third. Let's take him out, dividing. I get 4x squared. Hmm, smells like a square. 10x to the third divided by that. Let's see, I get, oh, another square. Hi, Mom. The difference, the blue, is the difference of two squares. Okay, now I know that multiplies back. I'm in good shape there. But I'm still not done. I'm still not done. I have to break up the blue part. And that is the difference of two squares. I, I think I remember the pattern. Okay? Let's see. It could be written plus none x, couldn't it? So couldn't I find a number plus and minus that cancel each other out. I'm going to have to do it for both of them, though. So this is going to be 2x and 2x. And for that 9, what's the other one? What's the other one? Come on. You got it, bub. Plus 6, minus 6. Bam! I'm not going to get any harder than that, Buford. OK? Now, i got to tell you something. I just threw about 10 problems at you, and they were all different, OK? Now, you're going to get that on the test, and I don't want to have you do something all different. I want to give you a checklist, much like when you get in a car, OK? You know this. When you, when you get in a car, the first thing you do, I hope, and it really matters what order you do, is you make sure your door is closed, don't you? Then you make sure your seatbelt is fastened. You had to make sure the door was closed before the seatbelt, because the seatbelt's attached to the door. Okay, so something you have to do in a certain order. Then you check your rear view mirror. Okay, why do you do that last? Well, almost, you have to do that after you check your seatbelt because you might change your seatbelt and then your rear view mirror is wrong. Okay, so you do that. Everything you do in order. Then you, then, and only then you start the car. Don't start the car before you close the door. Okay, all these things matter. You know to do this every time. Then you check to see if it's clear to pull out. Okay. There's kind of things you do every time, and you do them in the same order every time. What if I could give you that list for factoring? Now look at, I say look at here. Okay, this is a good one to know. Okay, well here's my suggestion for your factoring checklist. When I give you a problem, check to see, is there some greatest common factor that you can take out? There may not be, but always check, just like you always check whether you have closed the door or not. You may not even have a door. It may be a Jeep, but you check, okay? Then, after and only after you've 
check to see if there's a greatest common factor. You check to see, is there a difference of two squares involved? Okay. And if there isn't, or if there is, you do what's appropriate. And then, if that isn't the case, see if it's one of these forms where you just, you know, a number a times x squared plus a number bx plus c, and you use your rainbow trick. And if it's not one of those, yee. Okay, well, we're not going to give you any like that, so don't worry, at least at this point. Okay? So I want you to go through, get to know that checklist and go through it. You know how to do each of those. Okay? Let's try this problem. Use your checklist. Okay? Okay, let's do it and let's go through the checklist because I don't want to have ten ways to do this. I want to just go through the same checklist every time. First thing, is, it, is there a greatest common factor I can take out? In this case, there is. Your old buddy four, I see, is the biggest thing. You see why you want the biggest thing to come out, okay? Let's take him out. You see what I mean? Divide him out. Divide him into that. Divide him into everybody. And the numbers will be nice and small now. You've really chipped away at this problem. May not have solved it, but you've made it easier. Okay, let's see. Now, the next step, we've, we've seen to see, if, is there a greatest common factor? Next step is, well, of course, I want to check make sure that I did it correctly, okay? That's the first step. Now the next step, you're checking, is there a difference of two squares somewhere? Now in this case, there isn't a difference of two squares, but we're still checking it. We check the same three steps every time, just like your mirror in your, in your car. You always check, I hope you do, you check it, you may not need to adjust it, but you always check it, okay? So I check, is it a difference of two squares? And it isn't, okay? So I go on to step three. Is it the rainbow trick, ax squared plus bx plus c? Is it of that form? And in this case, it is. And there's no x, it's a t. It doesn't matter what letter, but it is of that form. So we use our method. Let's see. Let's make an educated guess, for the blue part anyway. We've got uh, t and t for the first one. And let's make an educated guess of a plus 6 and a minus 3. And let's check our rainbow. Well, no! that's part of the trick. Guessing is part of the step. Just because we follow the steps doesn't mean we're still not going to have to guess. Okay, let's make one more guess because we're close here. We'll try switching the signs. Okay, let's see. I use T and T and minus 6 and plus 3. Okay, I followed right through the steps, and my rainbow, there we go, gives me a minus 3, and I know I'm right. Okay? Let's do one more just to practice the steps, okay? Because if you just remember the steps, you'll be okay. The first step, greatest common factor. Hmm, greatest common factor in this case is a 5. Let's take it out. Let's chip away at this problem. Make the numbers lower. Okay, taking a 5 out will give me an x squared. Taking a 5 out of that will give me a minus 9. Hmm. Let's check it as usual. Yeah, that's looking good. 5 times minus 9. Okay, that's the first step. Take out the greatest common factor. Now, next step. What is always the second step? Is there a difference of two squares? Ha ha ha. Yes, there is in this case. So we go right to it. x and x. Plus 3 and minus 3. I Generally, I don't even have to guess on difference of two squares. And I know that that rainbow is going to give me that zero term in the middle, which doesn't, isn't written. And I am comma by ya. Okay. What have you forgotten over this Remember the greatest common factor? We've been doing this, but how do we find the greatest common factor? Well, we break things up as far as they'll go. For instance, in this problem, I'll break that 45 up into 5. doesn't matter what order I break them up. They're all going to end up at the same place. The A's and the B's. And that's that broken up. I just circle or, or draw around the end points. The 18, I'll start off with 2 and 9 and break the, th the 9 up as far as it'll go. The A's and the B's. And look at my end points there. And my greatest common factor, the largest thing that's in both of these green sets. Let's see, I've got threes, two threes in both. I've got one A in both. What else we got? I got a couple of Bs in both. So consequently, whatever the intersection of these two sets, 
is going to be my greatest common factor. Hasta la vista, baby. Not going to get any harder than that, I don't think. Now look at, I say look at here. Don't forget your factoring checklist. Go through the same checklist every time, and I think the whole chapter will be much easier. In fact, the next four chapters will be easier. Always check for the greatest common factor first. Then check for the difference of two squares, because that's generally easier than step three, which is your guessing game with the rainbow. Okay? And hopefully we won't get any worse than that, at least in this chapter. One more time, let's use the steps here. Greatest common factor? There isn't any. So we go on to the second step. Is there a difference of two squares? No, there isn't any. Sometimes there you don't do step one and step two. Go right to step three. Check your first two. Make an educated guess. Go to the last one. Make an educated guess. Check your rainbow. Did we get it? 30 and 2. Go! No. Nope. Don't ever give up. Don't ever finish these problems without having checked them. 3 and 4 is an educated guess. 1 and 5 or 5 and 1. Hmm. You get good at it after a while. Check your rainbow. 3 and 5. 1 and 4. Don't ever give up until you get the exact right answer. I wouldn't give you one that you couldn't do. Let's try one more. It doesn't always work on the third try, by the way. It could be the fifth try. Let's see. Two and six and one and five. Hmm. Two and five, I get ten and six. Yeah, and I told you it would work. And you know you're right. Let's go through the steps in this one. Is there a greatest common factor? Sometimes there isn't. I don't see anything that goes into y squared and minus 25. So I go on to the next step. Is there a difference of two squares? Ooh, there is in this case. Remember that it could be written with that middle term as a 0. So I'm looking for numbers that add up to 0. So this one's going to be y and y, and plus 5 and minus 5. These ones are kind of easy. And the Nicely, the rainbow gives you zero. <laughs> Not so bad. Now look at, I say look at here! Don't forget your checklist of factoring. Is there a greatest common factor? Do that first. Is there a difference of two squares? Then you're going to use your rainbow trick. I promise I won't give you anything harder up to this point. Okay? We'll stop there. Remember, if I talk too fast, you can always go to the home page, www.montgomerycollege.edu upslash algebra. Now, look, I hope you're looking forward to next time when we put all of this to use. Because the next four chapters, we have an incredible amount of uses for factoring. But you can't use them, you can't put it to use until you know your factoring. Okay? So you'll have to do your homework. Please go do your homework. The great Oz has spoken. Till next time.